everyone, it's Miriam with a Y. Let's paint something quick, easy, and hopefully pretty with the Marabou alcohol inks. And let's make it wispy and ethereal with a little bit of bubbly embellishment. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> For my substrate, I've cut myself an eight by 10 inch piece of graphics opaque white craft plastic. To move the ink around, I'll be using this hot air curling brush without the brush attachments. I particularly like these because they have a low setting which blows less air than a blow dryer. And for this particular piece, I don't need huge amounts of air being pushed at the ink, just a little bit. And this has that low setting that is just what I need. For this piece, I'm going to go with Bordeaux as my main color. And I've pulled out magenta and tangerine as possible secondary colors. What I've done is thin all of my colors with 99% isopropyl alcohol. So what I've done is add uh, maybe 20% of alcohol ink in each of these are just little five little five milliliter bottles so maybe about 20 25 percent of ink in the bottle and then the rest is just alcohol I find that working with thin down alcohol ink is so much faster than constantly adding alcohol to thin the ink it makes my life easier so I do this a lot I'm starting out with several drops of my now thinned down Bordeaux, which is a beautiful wine red. I surround that puddle of ink with a border of isopropyl alcohol. I'm using 99%, but I'm sure that 91% would be fine too. Now I'm doing this so that when I go to blow and dry the ink, I'll have soft edges where I want them. If I didn't put the clear alcohol border down, it would lead to dark border lines on the edge of this red when it all dried, which I'll want later, those dark edges, but not yet. So more Bordeaux and more alcohol. Now you'll see at the end of this puddle where I don't add alcohol, a darker ridge is going to form because it doesn't have the alcohol to soften it, and I also don't blow at it to break it up. I want a darker center point for this painting. Something I've come to see and like a lot about these inks is that they dry with border lines that form and are more resilient or resistant to alcohol than other brands of alcohol ink. It gives me more design options. I often get to keep some interesting lines that I create while I'm painting, and I get to move the surrounding ink too. So I can fade an area, but still keep those border lines. It's pretty cool. I'm adding a tiny bit of magenta now, just for some color variation. And now some tangerine for the same reason. I loved the blending of the tangerine and the Bordeaux, so I decided to do more of that. Now, here, I was a bit heavy-handed and um, messy <laughs> with the alcohol, so it ended up sprinkling further in than I'd wanted, so I had to adjust to work that into the piece. I know that I'm going to be adding bubbles later, so I'm not too concerned at this point. But I do remember to be a bit more careful going forward. Now for fun and to experiment, I'm adding some alcohol here and there and blowing at it with the hot air on the low setting. This entire piece was done at the low setting, by the way. So I really was never blowing massive amounts of air at this. I kind of wanted a softer overall look. I really love the flowing silk 
look that you get by doing this. It's a little addictive and I have to rein myself in or I could just do this for like an hour and the whole piece would end up being little silky ribbons everywhere. <laughs> now I'm not worried about the ink that's accumulating along the edge of the paper because that's going to be really easy to remove. When I'm done or close to done adding these fun silk strips, as I call them, I take a piece of tissue paper wet with some alcohol and I just wipe the excess ink away. I'm making sure not to form a straight line as I come into the actual painting because then it won't look organic or natural. I fade some ink into the area again with alcohol and some air, and then I wipe at what I don't want. Then I add some more areas of fading throughout the piece and finish up with more careful wiping and sort of gradual fading with the tissue. This wiping works when you do it on color that's already pretty faded and transparent. If the color is too bright and heavy like it is in the center of the painting, wiping would be too obvious. So this method is something to use sparingly or only where it looks okay. But it is very easy to do. Now that I'm happy with my base of color, it's time for some bubble fun. <laughs> For this, I'm going to use a micro brush. They make perfect little bubbles and can hold enough alcohol or ink to make several little bubbles before having to reload, like if I was using a ball stylus, for example. So here I just add some thinned ink to the micro brush and very, very lightly touch the surface. If I press down on the surface full force, I'm gonna get way too big a bubble because it'll deposit more alcohol or ink onto the surface and that's not what I want. I want lots of little bubbles. Now another option if you're concerned about making bubbles that are too large is to tap the micro brush off on a piece of paper or towel or something just to sort of dry it a little bit before you go to make your bubbles. After making a series of light colored bubbles, I add some ink straight from the bottle to the brush for some brighter and darker ones. I think this gives these areas some dimension, some depth. Now the fun becomes deciding where to add these. This is a matter of personal taste and composition, adding bubbles where I want texture and interest. I add rows in some areas and clusters in others. At first, I stick to working with tangerine. Then I add magenta too. As I continue adding these, I also look for areas that I may not love. These colorful little dots are a good way to camouflage things you kind of want to hide a bit. As well as a way to draw your eye toward parts you do love. Like this border here. And this wavy line here, I really like this line, I don't know why. <laughs> and this little triangle here. And if you feel that some areas are lighter in color than you'd like, or maybe too plain, adding this little dot texture helps there too. Here I'm filling in some areas like that, that I think I kind of washed away too much. 
and then I've got to put the brush down because adding bubbles can become addictive too. So <laughs> this is something else I can do for another hour if left to my own devices. <laughs> I love how this turned out. These Marabou inks make me so happy and are they're just a really fun addition to my arsenal. I love how differently they behave from other inks. If I only had one set of inks, I might not be aware of differences because I wouldn't know that they all behave differently. But when you do have a variety to work with, you get to do more things and I really appreciate that. With this done, I will seal the painting with a couple of light coats of Kamar varnish. I'm not sure in which position I would frame this. I sometimes lean toward the way it was positioned most often while I was painting a piece, but I also like this particular one vertical too. I'm kind of curious, what do you guys think? Tell me in the comments which position you prefer and tell me what you thought of this overall. Let me know with a thumbs up. Oh, and tell me if you're more abstract oriented or representational when you use alcohol inks. Like when you paint, what do you tend to like to paint? Alrighty, thank you for spending your time with me and a special thank you for sharing this video with other ink lovers and for all you guys do for my channel. I so appreciate it. May your creative nature shine. See you soon. Bye now.